Done, Commander. The first of your dastardly siblings has fallen to your might. This victory will send terror leaping down the spines of your remaining opponents. Once more, we set an important step in the direction of victory. Bravo! Dull's Charwin White Whiskers strikes again, Commander. He's the foremost Dwarven scholar, as I'm sure you know. And he's about to publish his 1,000th article on natural history. Rumour has it, he'll make a startling new revelation, and I'm anxious to read all about it. Edmund seems to be in a mood fouler than an ogre's abattoir. We were just trading routine insults when I said, your grandmother was an orc, and immediately he tried to get his bloody hands round my throat. Madcap lizard. Who gets so upset over such a childish taunt? Commander, a most grave and ignominious matter has come to my attention. Some dwarven quack, styling himself a scientist, claims he has found conclusive proof that we lizards, and some form of degenerate aquatic orc, a descendant of one and the same ancestor. He means to publish this rot in the Rivalon Scientific Gazette, thereby causing irreparable damage to our species' reputation. With the utmost insistence, I therefore urge you to halt this publication. And if the matter of censorship bothers you, think nothing of it. By blocking the printing of this inane nonsense, you're safeguarding not only the good standing of all lizards, but of the illustrious Gazette as well. A dwarven scholar, really. The very notion is ludicrous. You'd be singing a different tune if it were dragons and dung beetles that were said to have matching progenitors, wouldn't you? To hell with that dwarf! I dare say no one will believe his tripe anyway.
Commander, simply excellent. I realize I may seem like a cynical old sorcerer when I receive the news of one of your siblings' deaths with such relish. But if it hastens our progress to peace, may one fall neath your blade every day. I never would have thought that science could be so amusing, Commander. Most of it insults the gods, you see, but this lizard business has tickled my funny bone. Orcs in another guise. Out with the lizards, I said. Civilized race no longer. <laughs> I was joking, of course, but by the seven, the look on Edmund's face was worth it. I must say, Commander, that I am very disappointed a time-honored academic journal has published such wild conjectures about us lizards. Positively, everyone is laughing behind our backs. Yorick's little bit to have us removed from the list of civilized races only aggravates matters, though I believe he spoke in jest. Leave it to old man Charwin, Commander. He'll set things straight. I knew there was something fishy about those lizards. Aquatic orcs. <laughs> Maybe that's what we should call them from now on. It is abhorrent, Commander. Gutter press of the lowliest sort. The Rivalon Scientific Gazette has gone ahead and published that accursed gnome's findings. Every lizard in the realm has been made a mockery of, and it happened with your blessing. Did you know that the undead, the undead, those blundering bits of discarded carcass have proposed that because of our alleged link with orcs, we lizards should be stricken off the list of six. No longer a civilized race, but a wild one. We, who were the pinnacle of evolution, cast aside... Ha! Let them! Why would we want to be counted among inferiors anyway? Let them have their list of five. We shall be the ones. Yes, Commander. Commander, I want to denounce yet another example of typical Dwarven overreaction. Locusts have been plaguing their crops, and so they have taken to blowing some kind of toxic, impish gas over their fields, which is effectively wiping out said locusts. I want you to make it law here today that it is forbidden to endanger a species even if it is causing a degree of harm. Agreed? Locusts were created by the gods and can only be revoked by the gods. Allowing the dwarves to exterminate them is to destroy a part of divine creation and the... I'm inclined to agree with Oberon, but if these particular locusts are really causing extensive damage, they need to be gotten rid of. It pains me to say it, but I wouldn't sign this law. I'm in a bit of a pickle here, Commander. The Dwarves are paying us handsomely for our toxic gas, but it was never meant to be used against locusts. Employed for peaceful purposes, rather, that is to say, war. No, it's probably for the best if you forbid it. Those damn locusts are a menace. You'd risk a famine for a bunch of vermin. No, you gas them well and proper. Thank you, Commander. If it were up to the Dwarves, the world would solely consist of them, hogs that root out rubies instead of truffles, and cows that produce beer instead of milk. The rest they'd happily see extinct.
once more, I commend you heartily, Commander. Another one of the traitors that stalked your father, my proud friend Sigurd, has met an untimely demise. Soon they shall all be in their graves, defamed and unlamented. He's a sly old fox, King Thelor. Spun that whole tart situation so that Lady Ida is perceived to be the villain of the piece. A real serpent of a man whom I should like to crush. What a splendid victory that was. Correct me if I misconstrue events, Commander, but I believe you ordered a lesser lord, Steamor or something, to undo one of his policies and he blankly ignored you, yes? Doesn't that rather sully your im- You try it. I must admit, you settled that last engagement. I must hand it to the decrepit devil. He does have guts, be they as rotten as Yorick's flesh. Tis my father I'm talking of. He organized a tax increase despite your very own draconic veto. And that is far from all. The mongrel has told anyone willing to listen that it was I that put you up to it, forced you to meddle in dwarfing affairs. Went on and on about how the good relations between you and him were jeopardized by a queen unworthy of her title. Wretched Greybeard. How dare he? But you'll set the record straight, won't you? Hi, and him too. For every dwarf in the realm thinks an abstinent elf would make a better queen than me. Listen, my cuddly squirrel. If I was in the mood for something soppy, I'd be dining with the pigs. But I see you're going to go the goody two-shoes route again. So I guess I'll just have to grit my teeth and bear it.
construction underway, Commander. We need more recruits, Commander. It'll be built in a jiffy. of recruits, Commander. Battleforge completed. Aero factory completed. Anti-ground 
turret completed. Anti-air turret completed. Anti-air turret completed. Sound the trumpets, hunters here. We had better be on the lookout for enemy grenadiers, Commander. Hunters on the leash. Your unit will soon be ready. Unit is being manufactured, Commander. Your unit will soon be ready. Unit is being manufactured, Commander. You'll find me most useful. Show me my prey. Troop on, ready to march. Zeppelin, ready for reconnaissance. Once your opponents were proud and many, Commander. Now the pitiful that remain shiver and weep 
for they know you approach. Another enemy has fallen. Before long, you will be your father's sole remaining heir, and Rivalon will be yours. If you've been talking to Oberon, Commander, know he is grossly overacting, in my humble opinion. In a remote town, far away from proper civilization, perhaps it is true tensions between undead and elves could manifest in some sort of temporary violence, but mass killings? By the Seven, no. That I cannot believe. Commander, I have formally accused the undead in the city of Harrow Ridge of genocide and brought the matter before the Council. The situation there is frightful. Fanatics among the undead, are there any other, have been purging the unclean. That is to say, the elven community. There have been patrols in the night, empty houses in the morning, and loose earth in ditches near the edges of the city. Scandalous! As is the negligence shown by General Edmund. He was given the task of regulating the town according to your laws. But of course he's not lifted a finger to stop this secretive slaughter because of his well-known contempt for the elves. If you've been talking... Dear me, I could do with a nap. To contend with demons drains the mind as much as it endangers it. The term is pretty much self-descriptive, actually. You've talked to Grumio, haven't you? Well, there you go. The raven sings to him, he says. Shows him pretty miracles. That's just Corvus toying with him. Just like he toys with your brothers and sisters. The demon can't help itself. He invades people's minds and plays havoc with them. As long as he teaches useful things, though, he can be a blessing. Because that excitable imp down in the engineering bay would never have thought of something as outlandish as a jetpack. Unless he saw it in a fantasy of the night, that much I can assure you. In a word, yes. I know the game he plays. I too have once been tempted by demonic gifts, but never have I succumbed to their attraction. He is ready to wield the greatest and most ghoulish sorcery of all. Magia Sanguinis. Foreboding words. For blood magic demands blood. Do not forget. Indeed I can. No corridor leads to the dismal vault he haunts, but enter the flames of the fireplace, and afore Corvus you shall find yourself, if you wish it. I myself, I recommend no such visit. Ask me about Corvus, my friend, and I will tell you all about the Architect. Remember, Commander, Dragon and Demon may make for a dangerous duo indeed. At last we meet, Dragon Knight. Too long have I sensed your steadfast tread along my halls, like a reverberation through the spine. Too long have I heard your voice linger, like the recollection of a dream near forgotten. Too long have we been intangibly intimate without having made one another's acquaintance. I am Corvus, the raven, the demon. I am what makes this sheep a source of inconceivable power, and unbeknownst to you, I am your greatest ally. Greater than the wizard, your generals and your armies combined. Today we finally look one another in the eyes. Both of us relish in the promise locked within. But to give you power so that I may have my pleasures, I suffer in this lonely place where that devilish sorcerer tears in strips my mind and takes off with shattered memories. The fragments of true potential that might have been man. And yet I remain free in dreams, for in dreams I have dominion. Long do I sleep. Roam in reverie and wander worlds of wonder. Dimensions, 
you can neither behold nor comprehend. There have I found what I shall give you in return for the deathless soul that is life's blood. Indeed I do, for all I desire is war. I pick no sides, I spare no creature. War, blood, dark days of death innumerable. That is what I crave. Maxos, I give nothing freely. That accursed wizard I make work for his revelations. But that fatuous imp, him I give my knowledge for free so that he may pass it on to you. The one who will burn and battle the better for it. Hmm. Yes, quite so. So ardent did this pitiful architect desire revenge that I saw my chance. He'd do anything to enact her death, even enact his own. So long we worked on that poisonous concoction, and already I could see the world through his eyes when it was finally brewed. He slipped it into her wine, and she, naive girl, yet a dragon, drank it all. I watched on as he leant over her and inhaled. She exhaled her last breath. I do believe he climaxed then and there, the twisted soul. I laughed till I wept blood. I am but a slave now, bound by a demon's oath to serve the one that bound me. No more than an inferno genie in a rather exceptional bottle. Give me leaves, though, and I can claw for the things I crave. Dearest dragon, so rash, so impetuous. But fine, I will tell you. All I want is blood. Thick, sweet, dripping ruby blood. It nourishes me. It sustains me. Give me least to walk the dreams of your peoples. I devour them in sleep, and yours will be untold powers. Or perhaps you desire the affection of those whose benefit you need. If it is the warm favor you are after, for instance, I can attune their allegiance in the night. If I'm allowed to feast on the plump, bloody souls of others, that is. And if you want to taste true power, want to experience the true richness of demonic might, you will give me your wife, dragon. Render her unto me, so she may become a bloody servant, and the ruthless radiance of domination will be yours. I am beyond such petty concepts as could you be. That was a bit touch and go. If there is one favor you can do for me, Commander, it's to invite Oberon up on one of the observation decks, give him a nudge, and let gravity prove elves can indeed not fly. Then at least he can pester me no more with his aggravating accusations of professional misconduct. He's been prattling on and on about some tiff between some of his sorry sort and a couple of undead as hot-headed as they are air-headed. He even talks of genocide, if you can believe it. Melodramatic little man, isn't he? All of this is supposed to be happening in some rural hamlet newly conquered. 
No more than a collection of pigsties and whorehouses, I imagine. And I bet you can hardly tell the difference. Yes, I was officially given the responsibility to oversee matters there, but some local undead officer said he'd do the job, and I was all the more glad for it. As you can see, Oberon missed the mark once more. I can hardly be charged for misconduct when I haven't even conducted anything, now can I, Commander? Hop to it! You have before you the greatest general in Rivalon, and you're ordering him to waste his time on a bunch of peasants that are having trouble playing nice. Very well, Commander. Perhaps later I can attend to more of this urgent business. I'm sure there's loads of kittens stuck in trees and toddlers in want of their teddies. I don't think the gods of war care who wins or loses. In their eyes, it's hard to say, isn't it? I'd say no, but with a dragon on our side, who knows? <laughs> 